to those of you that are watching, I know this is a bit different because I've got John Edmonds here. You probably wondered what John looked like. <laughs> you didn't think he was nearly this handsome. So uh, John is the president of Veritas Baptist College. Uh, he is a faithful uh, member and worker here at Faith Baptist Church, but more importantly, he's just a, a dear friend, loves the Bible, uh, loves God's people, and I know that uh, you've enjoyed his ministry. And then all of you that are listening right now on the audio podcast, uh, everything will basically be the same for you. Uh, really, it's you that are watching that have a little bit of a different format because there's two of us instead of one of us. Uh, but I think that's better. And we're looking forward to jumping into our brand new book, which is the book of First John. And we're calling this little series, Walk in Light, Walk in Love. Because that's really the essence of the book of First John, walk in light, walk in love. So I think before we start just diving into First John chapter 1, uh, John, obviously it's always important in establishing uh, any, the context for any book to think through author and audience. So say, say a word to our listeners just about the author of the book of First John. Sure, John, this is the, uh, the Apostle John, a great man of God, wrote the Gospel of John, Book Revelation, and the three epistles. And John now is, has seen many things happen. The decades have rolled by since Christ has gone back up to heaven. And now John is writing, he's seen a number of problems happening in the church among people that really love God uh, already. It did not take long for the devil to introduce air into their New Testament church. As a matter of fact, as we had talked about before, in Acts 20, Paul told the people at Ephesus, Ephesian elders realize you're going to have air from your own midst. And John now is writing the gospel, the, the epistle of John here, the first epistle, to show people again how they need to walk in love, walk in fellowship with God, and they need to realize air for what it is and realize there is a very live spirit that of, of error that is in the world that they need to be careful of and they need to make sure that they are walking with God day by day in love. So when you think about John, uh, obviously you think about uh, the Apostle John and that, that's obviously who wrote the book of First John, who also wrote the Gospel of John, the books of First, Second, and Third John, and then the book of Revelation. What's interesting, though, John, <laughs> is that a lot of Johns today. Uh, what's interesting is that John never introduces himself in the letter. So what are some valid reasons why we believe that John is actually the author of First John? Because it never says John. Like in Paul's epistles, he says, hey, it's Paul. So we know. So how do we know it's John? It is interesting that what Pastor just said, the Gospel of John 2, we never find John mention his name. And so, you know, from early church tradition, they have taken the Gospel of John to be written by John, the Apostle John, as well as the epistles. You know, tradition is not always reliable, though. But it's interesting, as you look at the epistle of 1 John, you find a lot of the same common things that John deals with in, in the Gospel of John. And so we're going to see some connections between that as we go through even today. Uh, one of my favorite verses, and I won't get there yet, but in the Gospel of John, we find where John has some really common themes in both, both, both books that would just cry out, these have got to be by the same writer. Yeah, and, and there are, I mean, there's a, there are a number of reasons. No one has ever really denied uh, that John was the author of, of the book of first John. Matter of fact, the fact that his name is not mentioned actually is a, a good evidence that he did write it. Because when you think about the book of first John, whoever is writing speaks authoritatively. Like you need to do this. Uh, you need to do this. And we're going to talk about some of those things. Nobody would dare take on that level of authority without apostolic authority. Uh, then in, in addition to that, all of the church fathers uh, at, to, to a person uh, cite the book of 1 John as having been written by John. And when you think about the fact that John was most likely the youngest disciple, he lived the longest. Uh, this, this book was written in the 90s, in the first century. Uh, all the other apostles have died a martyr's death by this point. In fact, John is the only one of the 12, the original 12, that did not die a martyr's death. Obviously, J Judas committed suicide, but uh, the others had all died martyr's deaths. So uh, John is really kind of bridging 
the the generation that was alive during the time of Christ and that kind of that second generation to follow. He's bridging that. And John, as you mentioned, there are some really dangerous philosophies that are now creeping into the church, one of which is Gnosticism. And maybe you've heard that term in your own church, which is kind of this idea that we can have special hidden knowledge and that this material world is really not that important. It's more of this ethereal, mystical type of And there were teachers like Serenthus and others that were trying to tout this. And it was really an an attack on the basic doctrines of Christianity, one of which was the the humanity of Christ. They were denying the humanity of Christ and all that went with that. So when you deny the humanity of Christ, you're denying the incarnation, uh, which would involve the virgin birth. Uh, You're denying the, uh, the bodily resurrection. So the, these are tenets to our faith. These are core doctrines. And so John was dealing with all of this as he wrote, wrote the book of First John. He sure was, Pastor. There were some serious areas, as you mentioned, that were coming on the scene as John has been observing what's happening over the last several decades. And some of these, you know, would come to full flower even later on in early church disputes. But I think if some of you heard of the term docetism, docetism is the idea that Jesus just seemed to be human. As Pastor mentioned, some people say, well, he's not really human, but that, that is a bedrock foundation of really what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ. And then you had some who said he believed in Arianism, which was Jesus wasn't really God. He was created by a God. He was a lower being than God the Father is. You had Ebionism. Like our modern day Jehovah's Witnesses. Exactly right. right. Exactly mm-hmm. right. So Jehovah's Witness is not a new, it's like everything, almost nothing is new under the sun. Jehovah's Witness just have resurrected an old error that the church refuted soundly. And then you would have had other errors that talked that Jesus wasn't really, he was adopted by God, adoptionism. And so already at this time, there were just a bunch of errors creeping into the church that John realizes people have got to know beyond doubt that Jesus is God. He is the God man, 100% God, 100% man. And we're going to find that come out as we go through this book. You know, John is one of these characters in the Bible that if I were to say to you, hey, talk to me about the important characters in the New Testament, you know, John would probably be on your list. You know, some people might might not, you might not mention a Timothy or, or a Titus, but you would mention people like Paul and Peter and John. And, and John, uh, during the ministry of Jesus, he, w- he always seemed to be in that, that inner circle. So when Jesus, for instance, was transfigured before uh, his, um, his, the three disciples, John was one of them. Remember Peter, uh, James, and John. Remember in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus caught, took three in with him, Peter, James, and John. Uh, John just seemed to be that one that was in that inner circle of Jesus. Uh, and as you said, John, he never identified himself by name. You know, he always identified himself in relation to his connection to Jesus. So that disciple whom Jesus loved, that one that laid his head upon Jesus' breast. Uh, he, he just, and, and think about that. So John, before he was saved, before he was called as a son of Zebedee, was known as the son of thunder. You know, he was a, he was a, 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 an outspoken, remember, even in the ministry of Jesus, when that Samaritan village uh, wouldn't accept Jesus uh, as a guest on his way to a Jewish feast. John said, well, what should we do, Jesus? Should we call down fire from heaven and destroy these people? And so God really did a work of grace in John's life to take him from this kind of this brash, headstrong fisherman to this apostle of love who had this heart for God and others, this man that was brash and and outspoken to a man that was humble and self-effacing and loving and wouldn't even mention his name when he wrote an epistle. That's a great observation, Pastor. And you know, John really was the apostle of love. You know, a good reason why people call 1 Corinthians 13 often the love chapter in scripture. I, I see why people do that. But as we get to 1 John chapter 4, we're going to find love talked about over and over again throughout the epistle. John will talk about love. John loved his Savior, Jesus Christ. 
He knew that Jesus Christ loved him. And I, first John is one of my favorite epistles. Actually. Uh, I really enjoyed the book of first John. It has some great things to think about, to help us be who we ought be in Jesus Christ. I'm really excited about this study in the upcoming weeks. And we're going to dive into it. I know that sometimes these opening sessions are a little bit scattered because we're talking about author and we're just talking about it, all these docetism and Arianism. And don't worry about all that. Okay. Let's worry about what does the Bible say? Uh, obviously, the, the main author of Scripture is always the Holy Spirit. It's holy men of God speak as they're moved by the Holy Ghost. And while it's important that God uses individuals to convey truth, what is really important is that we understand that this is God's Word. And this is God's message, not just to first century Christians that are dealing with Serenthus and Gnosticism, but it's, it's a message to you and it's a message to me. And my prayer is that in these, in these days together in the book of First John, we're going to discover a fresh relationship, a deeper relationship with God through Christ that will understand what it means to walk in the light, that will understand what it means to walk in love. We'll understand what it means to love God by loving others. So I want you to hang in there. I want you to stay with us. I know it's a new format. I know it's maybe not what you're expecting, especially those of you that are watching the video. But I believe that God's truth is, is worthy of our attention. And if you'll dedicate yourself to this podcast, I believe that together God can help us in some really, really big ways. So forgot to introduce my coffee cup today. I've got my Cool Beans coffee cup, and that will be with us for the next seven episodes. So get used to it. Hey, God bless you, my friends. Have a great day in the Lord.